good morning all welcome back to another session of e path to success myself dr nirupa thomas reader department of oral pathology and oot and college today i am going to discuss the topic recurrent aphthous stomatitis all of you know that this aphthous stomatitis is a common oral lesion which is seen in general population most of us are experienced by this lesion also very synonyms for this uh, aphthous stomatitis these are aphthous ulcer canker sore and aphthe this aphthous ulcer can be defined as a common disorder which is characterized by recurring ulcers confined to oral mucosa with no other signs of systemic disease coming to the etiology or cause of aphthous ulcer uh, the cause is different in different population and no single triggering agent is responsible for this condition also and numerous possible etiologic agents have been uh, suggested as etiologic factor uh, this one of the etiologic agent may be bacterial infection an alpha hemolytic streptococcus and streptococcus sanguis play an important role that is uh, some bacteria are identified or demonstrated from the patients with aphthous ulcer another etiologic agent is immunologic abnormalities that is autoimmune response of the oral epithelium was considered to be uh, an alternating etiologic factor another etiologic etiologic agent may be iron vitamin b12 or folic acid deficiency and trauma is another etiologic factor due to self inflicted bite or oral surgical procedures uh, during tooth brushing dental procedures needle injections uh, and dental trauma another important etiologic factor is endocrine condition that is during premenstrual period and post ovulation period uh, you can see more uh, chances of formation of aphthous ulcer few syndromes are associated with aphthous ulcers these are besset syndrome magic syndrome cyclic neutropenia and pffa syndrome that is periodic fever aphthe pharyngitis and cervical adenitis syndrome and we can classify this aphthous ulcer into four groups recurrent aphthous minor recurrent aphthous major recurrent herpetic form aphthous ulceration and recurrent ulcers with besset syndrome coming to the detailed description of recurrent aphthous minor this recurrent aphthous minor is more common uh, during the age of 10 to 30 years that is mainly common in young individuals and women are more commonly affected uh, than men the common site of occurrence is non keratinized mucosa because the keratin uh, acts as a protective layer so it's common in the lip mucosa tongue and buccal mucosa and this appears uh, or begins as a single or multiple superficial erosions which are covered by grayish white removable fibrinocorrelate membrane which are encircled by erythematous halo the size is very small that is 2 to 3 mm to 10 mm in diameter and these are of short duration ulcers and which persist only for one or two weeks and heals without scar formation this is the photograph showing minor aphthous ulceration here you can see fibrinocorrelate membrane which is covered with erythematous halo next is recurrent aphthous major this is also known as nicolis scarring ulcer or sutton's disease this is commonly seen uh, on the lips cheek tongue soft palate which can cause severe pain and dysphagia and this can also involve the keratinized mucosa like palate and gingiva incidence is more common in uh, hiv patients and these ulcers appears as crater like ulcers with rolled margins and induration on indurated on palpation due to underlying fibrosis the size is more than 1 cm and these are long duration ulcers which persists for 4 to 6 weeks 
and heels with scar formation. These are the major ulcers more than 1 cm in diameter and these are crater like ulcers with rolled margins. Next is recurrent herpetiform ulcers. These are uh, ulcers which mimics herpes simplex viral infection and it can be seen on any intraoral site and the number is 10 to 100 that is crops of ulcers can be seen and these are uh, characterized by small shallow ulcers that may be joined together to form large ulcer. The size is very small 1 to 3 millimeters and heals uh, within 1 to 2 week time. These are the herpetiform ulcerations. 10 to 100 numbers can be seen on any intraoral site. Let's see what are the differences between aftus ulcer and herpes simplex viral infection. In aftus ulcer, the main uh, triggering agents are immune dysfunction, that is, stress, trauma, diet, and depressed immunity. But the main triggering agent in herpes simplex infection is herpes simplex virus type 1 and stress trauma, ultraviolet and depressed immunity are uh, other uh, etiologic agents. And usually the herpes ulcerations appears uh, without any uh, prodromal symptoms or little prodromal symptoms are there. And there is no specific microscopic appearance in after sensor and no vesicles are formed in after sensor. But in herpes simplex infection, you can see prodromal symptoms like fever, pain, etc. And the viral changes that is can be seen uh, on the histopathology and vesicles are formed before the formation of ulcers in herpes simplex infection. The common site of occurrence in herpes ulcer are non-keratinized mucosa, but herpes simplex infection can be mainly seen on the keratinized mucosa. And treatment for aftus ulcer are corticosteroids and tetracycline, but antiviral treatment is necessary for herpes simplex infection. Let's see what are the um, differences or what are the contrasting features in between minor, major and herpetiform ulcerations. There are uh, a difference in the size of minor, major, that is, uh, in minor, uh, you can see the ulcers are uh, less than 0.5 cm and in herpetiform also, the ulcers are less than 0.5 cm. But major ulcers are more than 0.5 cm. And the shape is almost same, that is oval in shape, but major ulcers are crateriform ulcers, that is deep uh, crater-like ulcers are seen in major, uh, of this major. And the number is also different, that is 1 to 5 minor ulcers can be seen, major 1 to 10 and herpetiform crops of ulcers, that is 10 to 100 ulcerations can be seen. And the common site of minor ulceration is keratinized mucosa, but major ulcers are commonly seen in keratinized and non-keratinized mucosa and herpetiform ulcerations can be seen on any intraoral site. Minor ulceration we can treat with topical corticosteroids and tetracycline mouth rinse, but major can be treated with topical or systemic intralesional corticosteroids and immunosuppressive agents. Herpetiform ulceration can also be treated with topical or systemic corticosteroids and tetracycline mouth rinse. Coming to the histopathology of recurrent actus stomatitis. Histopathology is characteristic but not pathognomonic. Here you can see the central area of ulceration which are surrounded by a fibrinocurlent membrane and deep to the connective tissue here you can see numerous uh, vascular channels and a mixed, uh, mixed and chronic inflammatory cell infiltration. This is the exfoliative cytology picture of uh, recurrent aftus stomatitis. These have been referred as anishko cells and uh, these cells are consist of elongated nuclei 
containing linear bar of chromatin with radiating processes extending towards the nuclear membrane. And these are quite abundant in patients with recurrent adverse stomatitis. And the diagnosis is made by history and clinical examination. And uh, we have to exclude other similar type of lesions like herpes simplex viral infection, traumatic ulcerations, herpantaina, erythema multiforme, then oral lichen planus, erosive type, pemphigus, and pemphigus. Coming to the treatment of recurrent after stomatitis, there is no specific treatment for recurrent after stomatitis. Over the years, many drugs have been admitted. Uh, one of the most uh, commonly used uh, treatment or best treatment for recurrent after stomatitis is tetracycline mouthwash. That is uh, for four times for five to seven days. By using this mouthwash, we can reduce the pain, size of the lesion and reduce the healing time. A steroid ointment such as test and canacord can also uh, be used. And another uh, treatment option for the after ulceration is the use of anesthetic agents such as prologel and quadragel. We can use antimicrobial rinses to reduce secondary infections such as chlorhexidine gluconate method. Chlorhexidine mouthwash can also be used. And we can use vitamin B12 and folic acid iron supplements for the reduction in size of the aphthous ulcers. This is the photograph showing the laser treatment for recurrent aphthous stomatitis. You can see how the lesion is disappearing after four days' time. Thank you. Thank you all for listening.